All right, everyone, what's going on? This is the Bio 101 Group 4. We did our project basically on the limited mitochondrial DNA variations within the South Africa's black rhino population and implications for management. Now, we begin with this whole entire process by looking into the species conservation. Now, with the species conservation depends on three different factors. The first one includes identifying the genetically distinct groups within South Africa. So basically, the different distinct groups of rhinos in this example. We also look at um, different types of factors such as management units and trying to implement strategies to retain genetic variation between these populations. Now, to, become, to go into genetic distinct populations, you have to see that we there has very unique genetic variation between the different populations of rhinos. Now, each of these rhinos can be locally adapted into their habitat. So basically, they realize what's going on in their habitat and they adapt to it, whether it's like weather change, whether it's like competition, etc., etc. Now, mixing populations breaks this genetic complex traits now this can lead to outbreeding depression now what outbreeding depression is is offspring from crosses between individuals from different populations resulting in lower fitness than crosses between individuals from the same population now this can also be caused by genetic drift now what that is is the process of change in the genetic composition of a population due to a change in random events rather than by natural selection. Now this results in changes in allele and frequencies over time. Now the drift is caused by a decline in population. Now the variation in mitochondrial DNA, for short we'll say mtDNA, is useful in determining population structures and history. Now, mtDNA is maternally inherited, and that's a, actually a really interesting fact that can come into play um, throughout this entire process. Now, let's begin talking about the actual black rhinos. Now, these rhinos roamed Africa in high numbers at a given time in the past. However, the numbers have been decreasing. They used to be in the hundreds of thousands, and in 1969, we only saw about 65,000 remaining. Now, during the last century, the species has disappeared faster than any other large animal. Now, this is caused by atheropongenics, which is also known as human activity. And human activity, we mean by illegal hunting of these rhinos. Now, conservation efforts have been made, and over 2,000 rhinos are seen now compared to 1993. In 1993, there was 2,475 rhinos and since 2010 there's been over 4,880 recorded now there are three subspecies of these black rhinos that are recognized across Africa and now these subspecies were based on skull measurements to know the differences between the three now the first one would be the eastern black rhino which is also called the DB McKelly which ranges around 742 black rhinos the second subspecies would be the southwestern black rhino, also known as the DB bicornis, around 1,922. And the final one, which we'll be paying the most attention to, is a south central black rhino, also known as the DB minor. Once again, that's the south central black rhino, also known as DB minor. And that has 2,216 rhinos. Now, these rhinos. Um, don't have a certain geographic boundary or reproductive barrier between any other rhinos, but they do. Each of these subspecies occupies different areas with distinct habitats and climates. Now, some believe that each genetic species has a genetic or behavioral adaptation to their local environment. The genetic differences com was confirmed through the mtDNA test and the autosomal DNA analysis. Now, the current black rhino management policy is separate for each subspecies only because if you want to maintain for each subspecies, it maintains the possible local adaptive traits and also minimizes the risk of outbreeding depression, which we talked about earlier. Now, talking about the DB minor, which is the south central rhino, the biggest population of endured south central black rhinos is located in a game park called the Hiluriu Emolsi, also known as HIP for short. Now, the HIP population is located in the KwaZulu Natal, which is a province in South Africa. We'll just call that KZN. So, to not get confused, the biggest endangered South Central black rhinos are located in HIP, which is located in a province called KZN. Now, the KZN black rhinos are separated from all other populations throughout the north, such as Zimbabwe and other different 
African nations. Now, they're separate, they've been separated since the later half of the 19th century. The HIP and smaller remnants um, and other populations of South Central Rhino, such as the Mikuzi Game Reserve, also known as MGR, are sourced for meta population expansion and genetic management by the process of reintroduction and the species of restocking. Now, the translocation uh, movement of the HIP to other KZN reserves began in 1962. So basically, that population of HIP <clears throat> um, started moving around the KZN area um, and for short. And this expanding to other provinces in South Africa and later to other African nations. So because of this, the potential exists for KZN DB miners to be mixed with other DB minor rhinos from other small African populations, especially in Zimbabwe. Now, no study has compared the mitochondrial DNA sequences of the KZND minor metapopulations, um, so this will be a first. Now, the goal of the study is to see the mtDNA controls to find the levels of variation of the DB minor source population at HIP. Now, from this, we want to compare it with the KZN metapopulations of the DB minor um, DB minor rhinos, not just in HIP, but all across KZN, also with populations outside South Africa and locations such as Zimbabwe, and to compare it with other black rhino subspecies. Uh, for the materials and methods, the samples collected from the DB minor, which was 65 from the KZN, the DB Micaeli, from the Otto Elephant National Park in South Africa, which was uh, one and the DB by Cornus from the northern regions of Namibia, uh, which was four. The samples consisted of blood and pinna ear tissue, and these samples were obtained during uh, routine ear notching or translocation from 2002 to 2009. Um, from these samples, um, they were able to obtain DNA, which was obtained through a phenochloroform DNA extraction, in which they amplified a portion of the mitochondrial DNA uh, in the control region. Um, once they extracted the DNA, they compared it to different sequences of DB minor, uh, which were obtained uh, from Zimbabwe and the US and zoos in Australia which they obtained through GenBank. The samples they obtained um, they, to, the, to the data set, they also added 20 uh, samples of DB Micaeli, which were from Kenya and zoos in Australia. For the data analysis, they edited 101, the researchers that is, um, mitochondrial DNA sequences by eye and uh, consequently they aligned the sequences using clustal W. They tested the homogeneity of the base compositions using PAUP and the homogeneity um, it was necessary to in determining the haplotype diversity, the nucleotide and the standard deviation within the subspecies. In the article it states that the level of sequence divergence within and between populations was estimated during a pairwise distance analysis in MEGA 5.1, and standard errors were calculated using a bootstrap procedure. A statistical parsimony haplotype network was calculated using network 4.610. The sequence of mitochondrial DNA control region was determined for a total of 70 individual black rhinos. The DB minor samples were taken 50 from HIP, 8 from Itala, 5 from MGR, and 1 from N Duno Game Reserve. The 101 aligned sequences were 363 BP long with 31 polymorphic sites, and there was an average difference of 4% between DB Michaeli and DB minor. 4.5% between DB Michaeli and DB Bicornis, and 2.3% between DB Minor and DB Bicornis. There weren't any insertions or deletions of samples. The greatest level of, of diversity was recorded in DB Michaeli, which contained 13 haplotypes and showed comparatively high nucleotide diversity. It had a p-value of 0.011 and haplotype diversity with a value of 0.958.
The lowest level of diversity within a subspecies was seen in the Namibian DB bicorna samples with an N value of 4, where only one unique haplotype was found. The only problem is that this was based on a small sample size and might not even represent the total amount of genetic variation within the population. The haplotype network shows a clear pattern of the separation amongst the three currently recognized subspecies, with the KZN population falling out with the DB minor population of Zimbabwe. Their finding of no more than three base pair substitutions between adjacent haplotypes within the DB Michaeli subspecies is consistent with the finding of Moyate. There is a significant separation between DB minor and DB bicornis with eight base pair substitutions as well as between DB minor and DB Michaeli with nine base pair substitutions. Our, po our discussion looked at the idea of population bottlenecking. Population bottlenecking is an event that causes a great loss in the size of a population of a species. This causes a decrease in the gene pool due to a loss of alleles in the original population. This can be the cause of a single mitochondrial DNA in the KZN remaining population and therefore cause a lo loss of genetic variation. Severe bottlenecking can cause a monomorphic haplotype which means little or no variation in the phenotype. We can look at example number one, whooping cranes. And in the pre-bottleneck samples, they had up to six haplotypes, but this number was decreased to one in post-bottleneck samples. In example number two, the Cape Mountain zebras, there was, a, there was a smaller remnant population that contained only a single unique haplotype. But in the larger population, which we looked at a different different species, which is very similar, the Hartman mountain zebras, they had up to 11 haplotypes. The lack of haplotype diversity within the KZN D bicornis can be pointed to the recent population decline and fragmentation that would have increased the rate of genetic drift. Anthropogenic factors are not the only cause of lower genetic variation. This can be pointed to long-term demographic separation from smaller population sizes and local adaptions. In example one, we looked at Yellowstone National Park and grizzly bears. Uh, there were lower mitochondrial DNA and autosomal DNA variation, but there was no evidence of bottlenecking. Meanwhile, the restriction of gene flow from the north can be accounted for the lower genetic variation. In order to counter this anthropogenic fragmentation, we can use a genetic replenishment by restocking and outbreeding. Our experiment used mitochondrial DNA because it is one of the first genetic markers to show demographic decline. We can also use it due to a smaller effective population size, which we can define as the size of a population that meets the Hardy-Weinberg assumptions but loses heterozygosity at an equal rate to an observed population. Also use our mitosatellite DNA markers, which are used to observe levels of genetic variation found that as long as heterozygosity and allele numbers stayed constant, no management policy change was necessary. From these two, we concluded that there are lower levels of gene genetic variation within the KZN DB minor, but that it was not to be concerned. Reason one for this was the similarity of allelic diversity and heterozygosity of KZN DB minors and other subspecies. And reason number two were the higher levels of diversity within the D bicornis metapopulation compared to those in other large African mammals. Using five research tasks, they are able to resolve the genetic structure of the African black rhinos. Through this, a new experiment was conducted by translocating 27 DB miners to Zimbabwe. This new population was observed to thrive at a growth rate of 8.3% annually. The only concern is whether populations were genetically isolated for longer than previously considered.